What is up and welcome to the Cinepax Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Casey. If this is your first time listening to the Cinepax Podcast here, we sit down with different creators, whether they're music video directors, editors, or just content creators in general. We sit down, we get to know them, and we get a little insight about what they do. Uh, today, I'm sitting down with music video director Jay Pusha, the owner of Wet Visuals. If you aren't familiar with his work, he's directed music videos for artists such as 2K Baby, Bankroll Hayden, Lil Pete, and many more. Um, so yeah, man, it's been a long time coming. We're fi- you're finally on the Cinepax podcast. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So uh, what have you been up to lately? You just directed a music video for uh, Lil Bean. I was on that. We kind of linked up. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming on set. Yeah, we just shot a video with Lil Bean. Um, pretty much just working. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, could- if anyone follows you, they see your stories. You're pretty much shooting like nonstop. I think you told me something crazy on set the other day that... How many days out of the year were you in hotels? hotels? Yeah, I was in hotels for like 196 days. That's yeah. crazy. And that was last year. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's a lot of traveling. For um, sure. I'm going to Houston next week. Yeah, so it's just a whole bunch of traveling. But mm-hmm. I try to have a lot of artists come to LA because yeah. this is like the easiest place where, you know, resources and stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. And that's what you like about LA. Is it the resources, the, because how easy it is to find locations yeah. or what? Resources like locations, but yeah. also like everyone's in LA. So yeah. it's easy to, you know, maneuver. It's easy to get people to come here because also like when artists come from different places like the East Coast or yeah. whatever, they don't want to, they would rather come to LA because they could do studio. They could, you know what I mean? They yeah. can link up with other people, but when you take them to just a location like that's a smaller city or not really known mm-hmm. for videos or you know music people like what are they gonna do just come to the shoot and then that's yeah it. they have nothing else yeah nothing because else. in la they they have so much networking and whatnot they can yeah. do so that definitely makes sense yeah because I, I do feel that like if you had someone pull up to like unless if you have like a really good idea if there's like a location with yeah. like like somewhere in the middle of nowhere with something super unique you can't get anywhere else but la I, I can definitely see that especially like what i've noticed about in the bay as well is everything's more expensive like as far as yeah. like locations even just crew is definitely a lot more expensive than LA. Yeah, and the reason why is because there's so many different, you know, there's a lot of people that do film. There's a lot of film sets in LA where yeah. a lot of people are kind of competing. For sure. So it becomes like, it's like a wholesale of a lot yeah. of things that you could do, so. But you're gonna, pay, you're gonna pay for that quality though. Like if you exactly. want like a quality DP or steady cam, like you're, you, you have to pay, it's not cheap. And like in LA, like especially when people come over here, like they know, they're going to have to spend money. Yeah. So like, sure. that's a big thing with um, like, say for example, if you were to tell somebody how much you charge, wherever it is, like in a smaller city, yeah. they might not really understand because there's like a standard budget and standard pricing when it comes to like LA or bigger cities mm-hmm. like New York. Yeah. No, I agree. So let's go back a little bit. So I was looking on your YouTube. It looked like you started shooting videos almost about 10 years ago yeah (laughs) so let's hear a little bit about that like how'd you how'd you get into that like what kind of got you i mean that was like super early days like it looked like it was like a canon t2i like it was super early so so the way i did it was i started off with this camera it was called like the flip camera yeah yeah yeah, so i had one yeah so i had the hd or the the 480p one i'm not even sure to be honest like i just remember i had the camera and um we'll just use it for like little things. Like if I'm with my friends, like I'll just record whatever we're doing. Like if I had this, like this little group that Mm -hmm. I was in, it was called like active kids. Right. So it was a whole bunch of people that was in this little clique and we would just take the camera around, shoot videos or whatever the case may be. And then it eventually turned, I seen somebody in high school, actually, he shot his music video for his brother. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of like made me like, dang, how'd you do a music video? Like It made me like, how he do a music video. Yeah, for sure. So it made me like, just want to try it out. I tried it out and I just ran with it. That's I figured it out. Yeah. Rest in peace, the flip camera. People don't know that I had one too. It was like a, it's a camera, but then it had a USB that flipped out and it was almost so sketchy plugging that in. Cause like all the weight would be bearing on that USB. Yeah. Like, but it was fire though. And it's like small and portable. So you could just put it in It went out of business. Oh, really? Yeah, they like tried to do another one like that, like flipped open like a phone that like you could edit on it and they just went out of business. 
Dang. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace to Flip. The Flip was fire, though, yeah. That's I mean, where I started, yeah. So yeah. I did that, and then that same friend, his name is Jake. Shout out Jake. So basically what he did was he was doing a whole bunch of music videos mm-hmm. or whatever for his brother. So he would let me use his camera. And at that time, he had like a Canon 5D or something yeah. like that. Um, at that time, so I was going to high school. I went to Mopitas High. I was going to high school in Mopitas High, but mm-hmm. I was living in the college dorms. Okay. Yeah. So like, so I was living at these dorms at Cal State East Bay. Mm-hmm. So he would just like during the day he would see me, let me use his camera. I'll take mm-hmm. it to the uh, college or whatever, and yeah. then just start shooting a lot of videos. Yeah. Yeah. Fire. And then so you slowly started shooting music videos for artists, and then yeah. when did you kind of? realized that when you started making this more of like a job or a career when you realized you could start doing that because i saw wet visuals yeah. was like super early on you yeah. had the tag like in the it was a different tag but uh yeah. it was a little different so you you've been rocking with wet visuals for a while like how did that even what made you kind of just start with the whole wet visuals um i just wanted like a production company i just wanted it to be more professional yeah like in a way of when you were like if you were to hire me it's not really just me. It would be like a team, like a mm-hmm. team evolved. So even when I used to work with him, it was always like a team. Yeah. Even yeah. up to right now, like when I when I deal with um, Andy and like DPs, it's all a team effort. Yeah. I can't do it by myself. For sure. I could do things by myself, but I'm more like a team player. Yeah, because you definitely, I mean, I want to get into that a little bit later, but you definitely have transitioned from that run and gun video to i was watching like just the difference of your videos like it was yeah. literally like run and gun sony videos yeah and then which were still really good like they're still like solid videos like that can still do millions of views but now you're doing like these crazy high-end like i know you and andy did that video for i think it was 2k baby and you had like you had like the whole stunt coordinator yeah. and you had like people like suspended on green screen and like you've yeah. definitely done some a, a lot bigger budget stuff but i don't want to jump to that stuff yet so what kind of transition when did you just like really start that music video grind where you're knocking out music videos like back to back and you kind of realize this is like a career yeah so i had like one video go viral like first i had this kid um his name is sue generous yeah i shot his first music video he was like 13 years old which one was that was that the i shot they um i did like a package with them so Mm. i did this video called flex on my ex yeah like and then i shot another video called activist so mm-hmm. i was working a lot with them but anyways he went viral mm-hmm. so i shot a lot of videos before that but that was probably in my seventh year shooting videos mm-hmm. shot his video he went viral from then almost i had like probably five videos go viral or five artists that i worked with go mm-hmm. viral after him so it was like a kind of like a domino effect where yeah. i worked with him and then another artist I'll work with, they go viral and yeah. it just kept on continue, continuing to happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then if you can continue to work with them, did you notice if an artist would go viral, would you, would they continue to shoot with you or sometimes the labels kind of get in between and have different directors? What, what kind of happens with that? Like, I would say a lot of people I work with, I have good relationships with, Yeah, but I would say, to be honest with you, it's really, it's not really the label. It's mm. more so like newer people involved, like management. Yeah. Like it could be the management that could mess up a lot of things for a lot of people. It could help, it could either help the artist or really yeah. hurt the artist real bad. So I would say, to be honest, it's more so of like the manager thing, but I, be, I still have a relationships with a lot of the people I work with. Yeah, for yeah. sure. What are some of the artists that you think that like that you were with before they blew up and then have kind of rocked with you since then and like let you knock out a lot of videos? Um, I would say that till, till right now. I mean, it could be right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even because I know eventually yeah. like the relationship, like you yeah. can only like knock out so many videos exactly. together, you know? Cause I know like young Tata and Lil Mosey, yeah. like they knocked out a lot of videos together, but then eventually, you know, he went and did a video with Cole and all that other stuff, you know, like, and obviously he can't like exclusively work yeah. with young Tata, you know? So I would say like, to be honest, like I shot a lot of videos with Sue Generous, Banco mm-hmm. Hayden. Like these are like artists that I shoot a lot with. Um, I did a lot for, I'm doing a lot of videos for like Lil Bean and Zay Bang right now. Mm-hmm. And that's all I could pretty much think of off the top sure. of my head because I shoot so many videos. It's yeah. hard to like 
pinpoint and keep track. No, for sure. Yeah. yeah no, that, I mean, those are some pretty big names. We did that contest with Sue Generous, and that, know, that was pretty sick. Yeah, he, he's really cool. I mean, um, definitely pretty hardworking. And it's, it's crazy how young he was just yeah. blowing up. And it's cool to see that he's still making music because, you know, like, yeah. yeah, for sure. So from there, you were kind of doing more run and gun videos around the Bay, right? Yeah. And so you were kind of on that hustle. And then I saw you start doing something along the lines of like a tour. So can you talk about that when you, that whole, what kind of gave you the idea to do that? Yeah. So basically I had a lot of people coming from out of state. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people coming from New York, they'll meet me in LA. A lot of people coming from just all these different areas in the East coast. And you know, when a lot of people would ask for me to come to Detroit or wherever, wherever mm -hmm. the location was. So basically what I did is instead of going to these locations over and over and over again, cause I was, tr I would travel like back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. I just came up with the tour just as if I'm an artist, mm -hmm. like, or the brand is an artist, just like how artists would do. And I'll basically let everyone know, like, look, I'm gonna be in New York from this day to this day. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna work, we could book within these days. Mm -hmm. After this, I'm moving on to the next city in the next state. Yeah. So that's pretty much what um, was the inspiration behind it. And just doing something different. Like I like doing different things. Yeah. I don't like just staying in the box. Um, but when I did try it, it worked. Yeah. So it caused the attention I needed from whether you want to call it the industry or whatever you want to call it. But once I did it, it got the attention that I was looking for mm -hmm. for my business. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And were you able to get a decent amount of bookings? I mean, I'm sure you were yeah. like and it covers the expenses and everything and like. Yeah. So for sure. so I'll do basically like every day I said I said I was going to be there. Pretty much I would get a rest day. But every other day after that, mm. I would be shooting and working. And then last minute, last minute people would come and, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. For sure. And then would you have them pick the locations or would you like what would kind of you would. It depends on like what type of artist they are. So for like, sure. if it's like a street video, like I'll probably just want to just pull up to their like whatever, like their hood or whatever. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like make it easy on them. But if it's like a creative type of video, I'll find the sets or I'll find yeah. locations. It all depends on like, um, it all depends on like if what they're up for. Yeah. Because some people like just basic videos and other people like creative direction. So so are you still doing the, um, the what's it called type videos, the uh, the tours, like the run yeah. and gun type stuff? Yeah, I still do them. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I'm, that's why I'm going to Houston. For, oh, for sick. That. Yeah. So yeah, I still do them and I still do run and gun videos because it's, even though I do like higher production videos yeah. with the whole crew, I still like being ground level and level edit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's For fun sure. to me. Like if I could make it fun, it's going to be as easy as I want it to be or as hard yeah. as I make it. So, yeah. so are you still editing those too? So you go out and shoot yeah. and edit? Yeah. So yeah. you still edit all your own stuff? Yeah. So, all right. So look, I edit all, all the videos I do, but if I do need resources that for like people, VFX. yeah, for VFX that I know somebody could make this easier on me and it could be, you know, like it could just come out the way I want it to rather than trying to figure it out. I'd rather just pay the person and make it easy. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Save the time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel it. Like definitely like I know I could eventually learn it, but yeah. it's like if I could just pay for that shortcut, I'm going to pay for it. And the thing, too, is is like time goes by so much so fast, especially when you're shooting so many videos. It's mm -hmm. like, where do you find the time? Where do you find the time to do it? Yeah. So that's my big thing is like I could probably learn it. It'll probably just take a lot of time. Yeah. You were telling me on that last say bang video you did. Yeah. You did that effect where you like duplicated them like oh, yeah. 30 times or something. Yeah. And then like, what did you have to do? Because Final Cut, yeah. crap, you, you edit in Final Cut, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically what happened was my program just kept on crashing on yeah. me. Like it just kept on crashing. And it this was like a whole day type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to make it work, but then it'll crash for the whole day. So basically what I did was I just made it easy on myself and I... um. I just figured out a way how to do it. Like instead of cloning everything at one time, I would just like save like maybe three clones, save it as a file. Mm -hmm. And then would you do put like green thing. behind them? Or? Yeah, I'll just put green behind them. And then them. you just did a bunch of chroma keys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's sure. how I did it. But there's always little workarounds that you have to do. Like, cause like sometimes like you go to export a project and like 
just maybe that beginning title won't export and then you have to like do some like you know what i yeah. mean like some little work around and especially because the files are so big dealing with red files that i think that's why my computer kept on crashing for sure because of that but yeah that was like the main thing about that situation is i was almost not about to do it yeah so i was almost not about to do it and i was about to just say you know i'm not gonna do it it's not working for me mm-hmm. but when i did it um they took that picture and created a billboard with the picture. Oh, it became wow. its album cover. Yeah. But just the one look, with all the duplicates. Yeah. So yeah. just looking back at it, it just it was just like I'm glad I just like went through it. Yeah. I just went through it to get to the result because without that, it probably wouldn't have been, you know, as big as it was. For sure. Yeah. You definitely gotta just sometimes just push through and come yeah. up with creative solutions on how to like yeah. work with the limitations that you dealt with. Yeah, but it's a good lesson too because I was at the verge of just not even just giving up on it and just for moving sure. forward. But I mean, I guess I got my blessing after I just worked through it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. I honestly, I feel like the red footage is easier to edit though than the yeah. Sony footage. I, what, what do you think? But Andy's <laughs> red footage is wild though. Yeah. What was it was like six, six K or something. Yeah. So it is easy. It's easier to work with, but I would just, there's like, it has its pros and cons for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my, my, like the thing with me is like, sometimes the files don't all the way, um, upload, like they don't mm. let me import it all the way. Uh-huh. So I'll just have to like work with it while it's not imported all mm-hmm. the way, but it's mm. just, there's pros and cons to it, but whatever works for, whatever gotcha. works for you. So for a while I remember, so the transition from running gun shooting to these full production crews there was definitely a long transition because i saw a while you started working with just like a uh like a grip right you would just hire a grip and then so talk to me a little bit about that strategy of like how you were that shooting style of what you did and did it work for you or yeah so that worked for me yeah but like for me i'm i like improving i like getting better so i was telling the uh gaffer at the time like look I need a crew. I want to get a crew. But he kept on like, to be honest with you, he kept on like trying to like veer me away or distract me mm. from like doing that. He's like, nah, you're, you're, you're fine just the way you are. Like type of thing. And I'm yeah. just like, damn, I'm trying to like grow. So one day it was crazy because during the pandemic, this is where everything happened. One day he like charged me double for what I was paying. He's like, yeah, because of COVID precautions, blah, 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 blah. Right. So I was just like, all right, whatever. I'm going to just get a crew. So I reached out to Andy. Once I got the crew, I understood like why, like why he was trying to, you know, block me from that. Because once I figure out like how to go about it, like where yeah. it's just, it might've been a threat to him. For sure. So Yeah, because he was getting cashed out every time. So. Yeah, like, because I didn't know nothing about- Because he was doing everything. He yeah. was doing like, he was setting up lights. Yeah. He was rigging everything for you. He was- yeah. But when he had charged me double for that day, yeah. basically he just charged me like basically what I what, what we usually do, he charged me double, which is fine. Like, I understand price. Yeah, for sure. But the crazy part about it is the day before he decided me to charge, charge me double. Yeah. So I already have everything planned out and then he just hits me with this crazy number like- it was just crazy, and then yeah. that, which, that's what led me into, you know, working with the crew, so. You definitely, um, yeah, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on working with a crew versus just, like, having one, like, lighting guy? I mean, definitely, there's a huge difference between just being by yourself yeah. and having one person on set just to dedicate, help you with lighting. Like, I think that yeah. makes a world of difference, but... What, how do you feel about having that full crew next to um, just yeah. an extra hand on set? I like I like the full crew. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm a team player. So like yeah. I'm down to like I I like more like if it's rather if it's me or or ten people around me that have like that same type of vision and understand the and understand the goal, yeah. it's easier to get to that goal. Rather than just me by myself running back and forth, mm-hmm. you know, like sweating and just and like you're thinking setting about up way more things. Whereas like yeah. what I've noticed is if you have that full crew, you can really focus on the vision and the yeah. actual video. Yeah. Whereas like if you're operating the camera, you have to remember the settings, you have to remember exactly. this, this and that. But if you can hire this whole crew, you yeah. can really just focus on the visual. Because yeah. like on that last video, like yeah, I saw that you were able to focus on the visual. Like you yeah. had, what's his name? Lil Bean, like standing in front of the Tesla with yeah. like, 
you just had like this vision in mind, like, all right, this car's going to be on fire. And we had like all these lights, yeah. you know what I mean? And you didn't have to run and put lights there. You didn't have yeah. to double check Andy's camera settings. Like, yeah. see, yeah. for me, it's, it's just like, I put my trust into whoever I work with. For sure. So like, I don't have to, you know, like second guess them. Like I already put my trust in them and now I can move on to like the, you know, the other things I have to do within mm -hmm. that project. But I would say they're both, they're both stressful in different different ways i would agree yeah, yeah because definitely the run and gun has a lot less stress i feel like yeah because it's just on you you know what i yeah. mean but it's not yeah. it's not as like high pressure yeah. because if you have all these other people you're also paying all these other people yeah so it's a lot more stressful and then i don't know i feel like things have to come out right mm -hmm. like i feel like that's what i noticed when i started yeah. doing like a little bit bigger budget stuff is it felt just a lot more pressure like you're juggling a lot more in a sense yeah but um the thing with run and gun it's like you get things done faster thing with um versus you know working with the crew it just t things take longer for so, sure yeah. yeah yeah that's one thing you have to know so what advice would you give for someone who is in that early run and gun music video stage yeah if they want to start leveling up and hiring crew or getting um you know on bigger productions what advice would you give to them because you definitely shown over a long period of time that you have made that transition you went from run and gun to run and gun with like a gaffer like someone yeah. doing your lighting and then now you're on full production sets with you know, every position filled. Yeah. I would just recommend, you know, like a lot, like I would just recommend to just invest your own money mm -hmm. and just try to, you know, just do it for the first time. If you want to do it for the first time, invest your money and you'll see the results. And yeah. I know that these results will guarantee you like in maybe not right away, but in the future it'll be long lasting. Like, so what do you mean by reinvest your money? Are you talking about, like, let's say, say like, if you get a budget yeah. from the artist, just reinvest all that money back into the video or. Cause it depends on what the budget is. If you're For doing sure. running gun videos, you probably don't have the budget to actually like get a crew. Yeah. So I would invest my own money, yep. pay for the crew and then work itself out later. Like For let sure. it work itself out because a lot of things that I do, I invest my own money, especially dealing with labels. Yeah. Like you just have to, I mean, sometimes with labels too, you have to, put that money up front exactly. to even before you even get paid. And that's crazy to me. No, it's wild. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's crazy. But, um, I agree. I mean, even though I feel like if you can't afford, like, let's say like you can't afford to invest your own money, but like, let's say you get like $500 for a music video. Yeah. If you didn't pay yourself and just put that money back into the music video, that's going to be, that's worth way more than just like you running around. Like yeah. even if you paid for a cool location and you had a really good idea or if you just paid for someone like a dp to come out yeah. you know just with their own camera and then you can focus more on directing as this person's doing all the technical stuff for you exactly i feel like if you can just start adding in the job slowly you know like you don't have to go full out with yeah. like steady cam ac yeah. you know all that but i feel like if you could slowly you know just upgrade your videos i yeah. feel like that's what you're gonna have to build up to and that's what i'm saying as well like um just doing taking small steps to get to the real goal. Mm -hmm. But if there, if you have that opportunity and you do have that money saved, I'll definitely like invest that money within the right artist that you feel like meaning, meaning mm -hmm. like say, for example, like if you're working with all these different people, choose the right artist. To, if you're going to invest your money to invest into that video yeah. with the crew or with the gaffer or with, you know yep. what I'm saying? Like I'll definitely invest though, just so you yeah. could get to that next level because it's your work and, yeah. what people see is like what they're going to hire you for. So exactly for sure. But what about like, do you think it's tough? Is there a certain time where you should take the money though? Because some people yeah. want to make this their job at the same time. So how do you find that balance? You know what I mean? Like with paying yeah. yourself, um, you, you just got to know, but also like, like, there's many variables within that. Like you got to know, like, do you like the song enough? Mm. Do you believe in the artist enough? Mm -hmm. Because you got to separate, you know, I would just separate the money that you get, meaning like this money is going to my business or this money is going to, I'm going to use to invest in my business. Mm -hmm. You just have to know or pay rent or whatever the case may be. For sure. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, obviously don't go broke. Like, Yeah, do not go Don't go broke. Go broke. <laughs> don't go broke. <laughs> but I, there's definitely no point, like, because I was at that point and like, the last few videos I did, I definitely reinvested everything yeah. into it, you know? And 
when you do that and you reinvest, it's amazing looking back on that piece of work yeah. and you're like, wow, like most I've, I've never regretted, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, because like, let's say you get your yeah. first $3,000 music video. Yeah. Don't, don't think you're going to get paid $3,000 to time. direct it of music. Yeah. But I mean, you're not going to get all that money. You know what yeah. I mean? Even still, like if you're paying for locations and all that, and then things end up costing more than they usually are. Exactly. I feel that. I mean. Yeah. And also I was going to say like, just with that being said, like you just got to know, you just got to roll the dice because there's been many times where like, I like the song so much. Mm -hmm. I think I believe in the artist. Look, I'm going to just invest a whole budget into it. Yeah. And then I got to deal with that. Like I got to, you get what I'm saying? Like if nothing happens with that, you know, book another video after that. Yeah. It's like, it's just a risk that you got to be willing to take. For sure. Because I've done it so many times where like, um, I'll get the artist and the song, um, approve the budget. Or I'm just put the whole budget into the video and make mm -hmm. it look super big. And it would just did whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to, you know, take the risk on your own. It's like taking on your own hands. Have you ever done that? And like you just saw everything just like skyrocket from there and just go crazy, like got a lot of inquiries and whatnot from that initial investment. I have, but then it's hard to tell. Like it's hard to tell where, where they're coming from. from. For sure, it's hard to tell where they're coming from. But um, yeah, I'll definitely say because when I when I first started working with the full crew, mm. I didn't really see nothing out of it. Meaning like uh, financially, like mm -hmm. more booking more people, I didn't really see nothing out of it. But in the long term it became worth it yeah. because my whole goal was working with the film crew is to understand my crew, the people that I work with, understand them. So we have chemistry because when that big opportunity comes in the future, mm -hmm. I already know, I already be acquainted with these people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I already know how to, how they work, how to work around them. For sure. So it just all depends. Like, um, there's been plenty of times where I invested my own money and it didn't work. There's times that I invested my money in, um, I got, you know, more bookings after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess you can't specifically see like, you know, yeah. like, oh, this came from that, you know, but yeah, for sure. Let's let's talk a little bit about your social media. So social media is definitely a important part of running a business for, you know, videographers and people, music video directors. So what are some tips that you have on that? Because I see you're pretty active. You definitely, yeah. you're posting on the stories. You get a ton amount of BTS. And I've always <laughs> said BTS is like crazy important for music videos because yeah. you're showing the process to the artists. Like, because I think if artists can see the behind the scenes and like how passionate you are about it, yeah. they'll be like, I want that to be me. You know what I mean? Like this guy actually cares about the video. I mean, I'm not sure if that's your thought process behind it, but I mean, it yeah. seems like it is. So for me, it's just like, I would take social media serious. The only reason why I have social media is just for business. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of the day, I would definitely take it serious because the more attention you, you bring, the more money you get. So I just bring, I just think of it like that is like, you know, attention equals money. Mm -hmm. As much attention, if I get, get my Instagram page, I have a whole bunch of attention or a whole bunch of viewers or whatever the case may be. I mean, chances of somebody booking is like easier and better. For sure. So what, what was your booking process? Because I remember for a while you had a phone number. Yeah. Do you still do that or? So that, was, that used to be my personal phone number, but now <laughs> I don't, like I have a, for sure. a number that goes to somebody else and basically they do all the booking coordinating. They do basically everything that has to do, that everything that has to deal with, you know, the booking process mm -hmm. where it go like. So what kind of questions do they ask? Um, or like she, what kind of information she, do they she'll get? She'll ask like, first of all, we'll do a review. Mm. So f before I shoot this music video, before I accept any money, you have to get approved by yeah. me. So I'm not just taking every single video that just comes across my table. Mm -hmm. So we do a review. Um, I have to listen I listen to the song and then I'll decide if I want to shoot the video or not. Mm. And they could send me a budget or whatever, but it really comes down to the music. Like, mm. do I want to be a part of this or not? Yeah. So you check out like their page and everything. Yeah. You check out the music. You check out exactly. everything and see if it's something you're passionate about. Yeah. And also like <laughs> when people uh, talk to the person, um, when people talk to the person and take the call or whatever, mm -hmm. she'll give me feedback on what she thought about the person. Mm. Like she'll write notes like he has good energy or he was quiet or, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. Like, so it gives me a better understanding of who I'm dealing with because I'm a people person mm -hmm. and 
the main thing for me is to make sure that if I'm going to do business with them or, you know, shoot a video for them, I'll want to be around them. You know for what sure. I mean? Yeah. And they're not, you know, somebody I don't want to sh- work with. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I think that's a cool way to take bookings because I know it's, it's a little overwhelming. I mean, we yeah. still take it booking from like a DM still, like if it's like yeah. a bigger artist, you know, like if you get a DM yeah. or do you try and refer everyone to this phone number? I try, I try to refer everyone to the phone number, but yeah. it depends on who you are and depends on what, like what is being said in the DM because For you sure. could tell me something in the DM and depending on who you are or what's being said, I might just give you my number, but the chances yeah. of that is like slim to none depending For on sure. who you are. Yeah. yeah. But I try to get everyone just to, just book it through this number or do a submission no, on the I, website. I think that's some uh, really good like system because I feel like it's more like a business yeah. where it's like, oh, you know, just text me or whatever. Like or even the form on the website works, yeah. but I think that's a lot better than the form because you're still getting that like information, like you said, from the, um, the person taking the call. Like, you know, you say you have like all these notes and whatnot. Yeah. And like, I like that you're going through with the song because like I had a form on my website and it would work. Like some people, yeah. I mean, you can kind of just tell though, like yeah. when someone fills it out, like if they spent the time to actually like type out, yeah. you know, and then if someone's like too specific on an idea they have, like if they have every shot of yeah. the music video, like at three Oh four, like I want to jump yeah. off the boat and swim to shore. I'm like, nope, like I'm, I'm not doing that. Like, how do you, how do you feel about artists coming to you with ideas? Do you take those into consideration? Um, Let's talk a little bit about the creative yeah. side. Mm, I do take, you know, everything into consideration because it's our video. Like whoever I work with is our video together. Yeah. And but even the crew is all of our videos. Mm-hmm. But uh, I take I take ideas like I'll let them say what they want to say. Um, give me their ideas. But I want to make adjustments. So where it fits my brand as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you go. Is it's difficult, you know, mm. working with artists that just, oh, I want this, 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 and this. If it's something like that where you're just paying me to shoot the video, I'm not even going to do it. I'd rather not even do it at all. Mm. But I want some type of creativity. I Like, as long as the artist or the management, as long as they trust my vision, I tell them, like, look, if you trust my vision, that's all I'm asking for. Yeah. But when it becomes a hassle, I'd rather not even do it. Yeah, for sure. Especially when they have changes nonstop and all that stuff. Yeah. It's not... It's it's the worst like when you shoot a whole music video i mean like there's sometimes like where you'll agree like okay i could see that like this scene is a little bit weird it didn't come out the way we wanted to but if they're really just trying to mac mac micromanage every single aspect of the video it's just not fun anymore it's not and it becomes more something you don't want to do like you feel like you're just doing something you don't want to do and I, i just try to avoid all those type of situations. How do you deal with that though? When the label steps in and they have specific things they want fixed. Yeah. Depends on who it is. Like, um, depends on who's speaking to me. Cause yeah. it could be somebody, it could be a representative from the label. It could be, if I'm talking to the vice president from the label, mm-hmm. then yeah, I'm gonna take them serious. But if I'm just talking to like somebody else that, you know, they just want to make the v- music video, their music video, mm-hmm. If, like I'm not gonna really listen to the person that wants to make it their video unless yeah. it's the artist. Because I've had situations where I worked with a label and there was like uh, somebody working within the label, like a representative, mm. wanted to change my whole idea and everything. And I called the artist, asked the artist, like, you want to change this? And they're like, no. Yeah. But it was really just a representative that yeah, wanted to make it their music video, mm. how they see it. And also the representative was a director too. <laughs> So that's yeah. it. that made it even worse. Like, make this change. Um, no film burns. Like, you know, it was just yeah. crazy. But that's funny. Yeah, I guess he's just mad he wasn't directing it. Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes you do you do have to uh, play the game where you know if they want changes, make the changes. It just all depends on who's saying it. Like, For sure. Yeah. Who's saying it? And no, that makes sense because like definitely like the vice president of like you said, the label, obviously you want to be on their good side because you want more videos in the future. But if it's a, you know, someone like you said, I could definitely see trying to hold your ground a little bit. Yeah. Because like, um, you're going to get a lot of those things within this industry. Like a lot of people want like come with ideas Mm. or like their changes for sure. Even on set, like you'll have the artist friend, like come up and just start giving (laughs) ideas. So it all really depends on who's, who's speaking for sure. Cool. I got some questions that people asked on Instagram. Let's check these out. I am Orange Wynn. Wants to know if you had to use one light for a video shoot, what would that be? 
Mm. You would have to ask Andy. Uh, I that's don't. A, that's yeah, Andy. What that's would Andy it. pick? Yeah, whatever Andy will pick. I don't know. That's how much I trust my crew. Whatever, yeah, whatever the crew says, whatever the crew thinks, it all really depends. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah there's not one light, and, but and I'm not so technical. Meaning, for sure. like, I'm more of a person that like, all right, look, I come with the idea, especially doing running guns. Like, come up with the idea, figure it out then. Mm -hmm. But I'm not hella technical. I don't even know a lot of you know things about the light. That's like mm -hmm. the gaffer. I'll tell the gaffer like. This is my idea. Whatever light work is going to fit that yeah, idea. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm not really a light person like that. I like that. that. It's all good. Um, Shawnee Tsunami wants to know, what's the treatment process like? Treatment process is good. Like, I just try to have good energy before I make my treatment. Listen to the song like 10 times. Mm -hmm. And then just create, like, I'm able to create, like, picture the video how I want it in my head. So yeah. I'll picture it how I want it in my head find reference pictures mm -hmm. and then go like throughout that process and also look at sets like all right i'll listen to the song go on peer space mm -hmm. sing some of your sets like if your set calls for yeah. it i'll make a whole video around the set do you save sets for later yeah i save yeah i, I save sets yeah, for later yeah. yeah and I'll make, there's, a, there's some sneaky ones like all the way down at the bottom yeah. some new stuff pops up you gotta always be on the, there's literally something new there every day which is crazy about peer space yeah so basically i'll just listen to the song a whole bunch of times write down what comes to my head go on peer space mm -hmm. and if i see a set that just or i want to shoot the video right here i'll make the whole theme around the set mm. yeah so yeah so sometimes the idea for the video comes from the set exactly or vice versa you already have an idea and then you're looking for a specific yeah. set because yeah it is goes it all depends on on the how song, i'm feeling yeah yeah the song and how i'm feeling that day yeah because i just go with the flow you know like just go with the flow because i could write a whole treatment and if they don't have the sets that's what makes it more harder mm -hmm. if they don't have the film sets that call for the treatment it becomes harder so i'll just look on pure space what vibes does it give me hotel like it's something like this if it gives me a hotel vibe or right, we're just gonna do everything within a hotel yeah yeah for sure that's fire yeah no i think I think definitely like, especially like working with what you have, if you have a location already in mind exactly. and coming up with an idea for that, I think can always work, but even vice versa. I mean, that's the great thing about LA is you can have already that idea and yeah. that location probably already exists. Ex that's why. Yeah. That's why I like shooting in LA. Yeah. Cause they have thousands of sets. Yeah. It's, it's definitely crazy. And I feel like there's only going to be more. Like, I feel like, yeah. like I said, like someone asked me last night, like, Oh, you think the peer space like hype is going to go down? What do you think? Do you think peer nah, space? No, nah, I feel like it's going to keep going. It's, it, it could go away somewhere like in a different state, but not in California because this is like Hollywood. Yeah. This is Hollywood. Cause you got to think like, with film sets, people aren't just shooting music videos. People mm -hmm. are doing commercials. They're doing a whole bunch of things yep. in these sets, and there's always going to be a call for a film set. Yep. Yes. Yeah. No, we get everything here. We've already gotten, like, we had a student film here the other night. We've yeah. had photo shoots, music videos, commercials. Like, it's everything. It's wild. And yeah. it's going to be even crazier once, like, it's fully open. It's going to be nuts to see what comes through here. Yeah. I'm working on mine too. I'm trying to get like you guys inspired me. You, Andy, and everybody. Yeah. What what kind of sets you got? Can you share or no? Um, once once it's, once once I have everything organized and I have a book, I'll have you come over. All right. And check it out. I'll see it. Where are you opening? You opening in L.A. or L.A. for sure. For sure. You yeah. Shoot all your videos there too. Probably not all my videos, but I'll have like probably probably one of my videos there. For sure. I mean, you shot at so many different peer space locations, yeah. so you probably know exactly what you would want, what you look for in a location. I mean, that's what we did because we saw problems that we wanted to solve in this yeah. industry, you know, like of just renting different locations and things we liked and things we didn't like. So, yeah. Because yeah. for the set that I want to build, there's this one set I want to build where basically I've been looking forever mm. on peer space. Like, when are they going to come out with one? And I would yeah. always like type it in and check. Cause I really wanted to book it for my for for the artists that I work with, but yeah. they never had it, so I'm just gonna make it. Sick, yeah. That's the, that's the thing that's weird about peer space is you can't search things. Yeah. You can't search like like I want a I don't even know like a like I want a moon landing set. You can't just yeah. search that in. But like I mean, the way you can do it though is you have to go 
You have to go to Google and you have yeah. to type in moon landing set, peer space, or LA. And then just go into the images. Yeah. So if you go to the images, you'll be able to see, like, you won't have to waste a whole bunch of time with a whole bunch of clicks. Yeah. I Gig- mean, you can find sets too, aside because not everyone's on peer space. There's Gigster. Gigster. And then there's also people who just have their website. For real. You know, I mean, you can. Like, I mean, that's super random, but like, I mean, like, we were looking, like, there's not that many, like, bank vaults on, like, peer space as well but like gigster and other like yeah. people's websites and stuff but usually that's like a lot more expensive when it's not yeah. on peer space yeah because it's going through one like one company or one it's yeah. like exclusive for sure yeah. yeah and that's usually higher budget stuff because they don't need the the what's it called the influx from peer space so yeah i seen the bank vault you're probably talking about the one that's in the club right yeah that, yeah, yeah i think yeah yeah that there's, there's a few of them yeah yeah um all right cool we got a few more questions mick get rick media wants to know what was the biggest moment when you knew you could do this full time and excel at it yeah so i shot this video for little blurry it's called emotions it's not on youtube anymore but i shot this video dropped it on my instagram page once we dropped the video i got calls nonstop. like my phone would not stop ringing and it, it would be like I'm on the phone with somebody and then like another call would be calling. That's wild. And it would be like crazy that for a whole like your maybe number was on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe like a whole three days, like nonstop. That's like, wild. People leaving me voicemails, like email, everything is booming. Once I did that, I just knew like this is a long term thing. And yeah. I just want to keep getting better and you know, I just wanna keep growing. I don't wanna stay in one place. That's crazy. Yeah. So did you ever have an actual real, like a, a normal job or that you quit for music videos or was it just pretty yeah. much videos? I never quit from a job, like a normal job, but I did have a normal job. I worked at, I think I worked at Safeway for like <laughs> a day and a half. Right. <laughs> but once they told me to come in at 4 a.m., uh, no, 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 I woke no. up at like three and I like, you know what, I'm going back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I worked at Safeway before, but that was like for like two days. So has your main job pretty much been like shooting videos this entire time or yeah you could say yeah, yeah like just mostly videos for sure yeah doing like other little things but yeah have you ever tried to other aspects of videography in the beginning like i know you said you're shooting videos for your friends but you ever done like the the wedding route or like yeah, promo did. videos and stuff like that i did all that i did yeah. club videos i did like the i did a wedding video before mm. i was like there is this website called gig salad so like i don't know Mm. if it still works or not but like um for the people who are listening like i used to go on gig salad and then just like find gigs and then you just apply for them Mm. and i used to do that i I probably booked like maybe one one gig from there maybe one or two gigs from there yeah but yeah so that's what i'll do but also i I do remember i did this before i started uh shooting videos matter of fact i remember um not before i started shooting videos but before like things got better for me within videos yeah i was working this catering job mm. so basically i knew this person that i needed a job and he's like yeah just you know i do catering just come with me mm. and he'll pay you that day mm. so i did that job i remember when i was doing the little catering job the whole the whole time in my mind is like damn i could just be shooting i could shoot a video why am i even doing this yeah no so, that's that's how i felt when i when i feel yeah. like everyone feels that way once you get to that point like where you realize you can make like even yeah. if you're just making like anywhere from like literally any i probably even 150 dollars. even if you do like a run and gun video for like yeah. 150 dollars, i still feel like that's better than minimum wage it is and you just like i said you can make it what you want to make it and you're so, building your skills you know what i mean because yeah. that's where i'm kind of like at where it's like or you could be shooting free videos at the same time. Like if you shoot, you could shoot free videos all day yeah. and just build your skills. And eventually, like, even if you're charging 50, a hundred dollars, 150, yeah. 200, like as you slowly build, I still feel like that's like, if this is what you want to do, like, yeah. I feel like that's honestly a better option in the sense, but obviously you need money for gear and whatnot, but, but you could always rent. And like, to yeah. be honest with you, like, I don't think nothing's wrong with shooting free videos. No. Even when you go get to like, whatever, if you shoot a high production videos, like, I'll still shoot a free video. I'm not going to say I'll do it for every artist or I'm not going to pick and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it, throw it out there like that, but I'll definitely still do it. And I've done it before where, you know, I'm going to do this just to give back Mm -hmm. and also like just keep my head level. Yeah. So yeah, I'll definitely recommend to anybody that's like, if you're trying to do work, 
just shoot free videos. Who cares? For just, sure. Just make it look like you're doing something because people only people when people see you drop that free video, they're not going to know if it's paid for free. They're not going to know the situation. So you just have to keep working and letting people yeah. know that you you're doing something. Yep. Yeah, because I know people right now, right, where they shoot a lot of videos, but they never post it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And they're in. If you're wondering why, like, um, people aren't just gonna book you just because they seen your video one time, especially on social media. You just have to keep posting, mm. even if you don't have no content. Just repost something from before. Yeah. But just let people just out of sight, out of mind. They mm. don't see you. They mm. forget about you. They're moving on to the next person. So I'll recommend to people that you know. People, if you don't post on your Instagram or social media, like definitely post. Who cares what amount of views you get? You just need to let just people the know. There. Just the fact that you have something new, yeah. like you have, or not even new, but like you're just working. Yeah, you have sure. a post as recent. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that. Even just with our personal like Cinepack stuff, like with the studios yeah. and like updating, like building stuff, like it's crazy just how many views those like. It's interesting too, like when you post like a normal story and then like when you post something that people actually care about, like how like Instagram will even promote stories. Like sometimes my stories will hit like 200 views, like, you know, all day and it's gone 24 hours. Okay. Then I post something that's like crazy. Yeah. And then it's like, it's insane. It'll literally like, you know, like I'll have like 2000 views in a day. It was like four people on Instagram today. It just showed it to more people, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What you said, like they it reached a different type of um mm-hmm. audience yeah because yeah. it could probably just tell that people like we're engaging it with the it, sharing it to each other like all that stuff like you can look at the shares like sometimes yeah. i see it's like in the thousands i'm like wow like yeah yeah it's crazy like especially when we post these sets like when we post like a new set yeah. you know what exactly. i mean so and like the thing about instagram too is like Instagram is like more like a social media, right? So if you post on your iPhone more, it's going to reach more audience. Like a post like, all right, here's my music video. Those videos don't do good. They don't. They don't do good because it's It's organic content. Yeah, it's too like you're trying to promote something. But when it comes down to like an iPhone video. Yeah. for that type of content. For sure. Even like a if you did post a music video clip, like let's say you posted your music video. Sure, that would do good. But if you posted your music video with your timeline underneath of underneath of like all the edits, your time is better than yeah. just the music video because it's more engaging. People are more yeah. interested in like the process of it. I mean, that might be for more for like my kind of stuff, like with yeah. the editing and stuff. But still, like I, I totally agree. Like unless if it's a crazy like groundbreaking yeah it would do really good but i still i do agree like the just the raw organic iphone content does so well even to me like that's how a lot of people blew up that's how like a lot of artists that i worked with doing iphone videos yeah and that's like a formula especially on instagram on youtube like yeah post your best videos like you know like you know yeah. like the music yeah, platform is for the, yeah so yeah what about uh we getting jay push your videos on iphone soon nah come on um i'll do it if if <laughs> i'll do it to be honest like if somebody really wanted me to do yeah. it or if i got sponsorship yeah but i kind of just want to go my own route like I feel you. and i love working with like crews you know yeah i like, know for sure i just met something running gum for fun but maybe not with iphone not with maybe iPhone. like with the sony camera I don't own any cameras. Okay. But um yeah, I don't own you any cameras. You just rent when you you mainly hire when you do the running gun stuff, are you yeah. just renting? I'll just rent. Yeah, yeah, I'll rent all my equipment, the Ronin. The camera thing I had before. Like For sure. the Ronin, the Sony. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. I mean it's pretty much the the best running gun setup is just the yeah. Sony's and the the <laughs> autofocus. To work like that, but yeah. I don't really like running guns like that, to be honest, mm. but I'll still do them. Yeah. I, do you think you can make more money in a running gun versus versus the higher production? Yeah. <laughs> but the, not long term. Long term, for yeah, sure. Because, yeah, like just running gun, like people see the same thing over and over and over again, like over and over again, like yep. you get what I'm saying? Like, that's the same type of thing, which isn't bad. 
if you're in it for the money, yeah, definitely do that. But if you want to grow and reach different levels, you need higher production. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if you want to do like a crew just yeah. to make it look like if they were to come to your video representative were to come to your set and they mm-hmm. just see you by them by yourself and they're paying you for or yeah. even i mean that's even low but yeah. like if they're paying you a lot of money and you're just like pocketing yeah. all that it's not gonna be good <laughs> yeah. unless if you're like doing a crazy amount of vfx work or something or like unless you, your name is your name is like have your brand established to where look this is what i'm doing and mm-hmm. you already know that but yeah do you still drop videos on your channel because i knew that was something yeah. you were doing for a while what what's your take on that like the directors posting on their channel but I don't because yeah. most of the videos that I shoot aren't going to go on my channel. Mm-hmm. They're going to go on the artist channel yeah. because of like, if it's a label, the label is not, sure. unless I've had artists mm-hmm. through a label, but you know, I haven't posted a video in so long that my channel is probably not what it was. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just for feel sure. like for me, I'm going to start a new ch- YouTube channel. Yes. What are you going to do? Uh, like behind the scenes or what? Yeah, like behind the scenes, just like my own little, um, just like my channel where I could bring in the artists, the talent, and, you know, create on that channel where I'll be able to monetize off of that channel because, you know, how YouTube is with the music video, you're not going to be able to really monetize. Facts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Music. Uh, you know Isaac, Isaac Maureen. He wants yeah. to know, why are you crazy? You talking about my tag? Yeah, the tag. I didn't come up with the tag. Who, who can, so what, what's the story behind the tag? I think everyone wants to know. For all that, like I was just driving in the car one day and I just said something funny to this girl. Yeah. And basically she was just like, she just laughed and she's like, you crazy. And But I'm really in tune with, really in tune with what's going on. But yeah. when I heard her say that, I like I was like, yeah, you know what? We're just going to take that to the studio. And she was like, no, we're not. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I just booked the studio session the next day. Damn. And then had her just do it. <laughs> and that's the same tag you have now? Yeah, same yeah, tag. Damn. But even you, Did you have something before? Yeah. It was, just, it was, it was this other girl that said what visuals. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you heard the J push you crazy. And then, uh, yeah. And I knew that that was it. Yeah. And it was the first person to have a tag but at that time i didn't see any directors with the tag yeah the reason why i did the tag, a specific tag yeah because i mean there's sound effects and whatnot people yeah. have sound effects but yeah no I, I don't think really on tag yeah and the reason why i did it is because i already knew that if you hear something 10 times or i believe the number is like anywhere from 10 to 16 i don't know the exact number If you hear a sound or a song 10 to 16 times, you got to find out the number on your own. All right. <laughs> it's already memorized in your brain. Yeah, for without sure. Without you knowing it. No, yeah. I mean, we, on set, we'll say it like once we, so many times. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. it's mentally like in your brain already. For sure. Because yeah. it's already been memorized. Yeah. 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 That's wild. Yeah. So you want a good, you want a good tag, not um, something. Yeah. No, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely interesting because producers have their tags. So, yeah. I mean, it only makes sense for the, the director tag in the beginning. And that's how I knew how powerful it was. Cause I already, you know, yep. you know, yep. I already seen it. Did it. Yeah. So and I that definitely wanted, helps with the branding and everything. Exactly. And just, yep. And then people want that stamp on their video once you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like it. a Nike logo or you get what I'm saying? Like for something sure. significant, like. Yeah. Swish or yep. whatever that brand is, but mm-hmm. it's good branding. Yeah. Yep. Sick. So what's the plan for the future? What do you got? What can we look out for coming from Wet Visuals and Jay Pusha? Yeah, I want to get a- just being able to create better videos and being able to work with um just other artists that, you know, understand the vision that I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but pretty much that's it i'm just going to houston next week and shooting these videos coming back and then have more videos so yep. just working throughout this throughout this year saving up and i want to 
So Dope. those are my two goals for this year. So hopefully, like if we were to do a podcast in the future or whatever, I already have those things established. Right, yeah. yeah, that's what we like to do. We got people coming back. I had Trevor Potter. You know Trevor Potter? Yeah, I think I seen his. I th- he works with Sue Generous. Yeah, he works with Sue Generous, yeah. and now he works at No Jumper. So he yeah. came on yesterday, and like he did not work at No Jumper last time. Yeah, he came back on the podcast, and now he like works at No Jumper and makes all their content. So that was a cool come up. And then I got adrian purse coming through later today so damn that's dope yeah, yeah shout be cool. out to both of them it's gonna be cool yeah so yeah fire dude um anything else you oh yeah we got one little segment so last segment is there what's like one thing that you would endorse something that you stand behind like whether it's like a secret that you have or something that like a product or really any type of like anything that you like to get behind one thing i stand behind is my word so I'm big on my word. Yep. So I'm big on the relationships that I build because the main thing is this, right? Somebody could be a janitor or somebody could be a PA. It doesn't matter what they are at that time. Mm-hmm. They could be the biggest superstar the next day, yep. the next year. So always treat people good. Stand behind your word because people always remember your word. Yeah. And that's like besides the plugins and everything like that, I would just tell everyone like, look, if you're going to say something, just do it because- and tr- always treat people good because you never know who's going to be who. Yep. And I've seen it happen so many times. For sure. So that's one thing I could vouch for, like stand behind that. your word. That's better than yeah. what I wanted. That's fire. No, I definitely agree, especially with artists. Like you want to keep that good relationship. Like yeah. let's say like you take a loss on a video and yeah. like you always want to make sure you deliver. Cause if you don't deliver, like even if it's just like a nobody. And I also, th- I also, I hated that. Like, so like I hate when, so like, let's say you had an artist who was like, wasn't as big, right? So yeah. like, let's say this guy has like a thousand followers yeah. and then someone, they get booked for a video with someone with like a hundred and fifty, you know, like a way bigger artist who's yeah. verified and everything. And they shot that video a few weeks ago and they still haven't edited and finished that video and put that other artist in front of them, yeah. treated them completely differently. Yeah. I feel like that's obviously not, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I tried not to do that as much as I could when like doing videos. Yeah. Because I'll see like. Like I said, I've been shooting videos for 10 years and mm. I have people that maybe I shot maybe like 10 to eight years ago or whatever, they'll re-hit me up. Yeah. Nah, I'm not, gonna, I don't want to work with you. You don't remember? Mm-hmm. That's how I be thinking like, yeah. and I know if that's how I think. I know that's how other people think. Mm-hmm. But the main thing is, look, this industry is full, like it's a crazy industry. Mm-hmm. And as long as you keep your word, you'll, it'll, you'll be better in the long run because a lot of people don't keep their word in this industry. Yeah. But you'll be able to stand out and, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I definitely just recommend just keeping your word on saying whatever you're going to do. If you're going to, if you have deadlines, you are, you're going to get the video done at this day, at this time, stand behind your word because when your name gets brought around, they'll be able to say that and vouch for you. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, people can follow you on Instagram at wet visuals and you want people to follow you at J pusher. Yeah. No? You All can right, follow me on both, both. Yep. at web visuals underscore and at the real J pusher anywhere else. Anything else they should check out? Yeah. So you you're time check, to plug. Yeah. You can check out my website is webvisuals.com. And if you want to book a video or if you're, I'm going to try to make some tutorials for like the effects that I do or whatever, they'll Fire. be up on there. Let's, let's collab on that. Let's figure something yeah. out. Bro, I'm down to collab. Let's I told Andy it. that too. So yeah, we gotta, um, we gotta do some collabs with Cinepax, figure something out. Cool. Yeah. So if you guys enjoyed the podcast, leave it a review on iTunes. I don't think you leave reviews on Spotify. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.